Everybody's got an opinion. Every Californian and Virginian. It's so hard to tell who to trust and who to ignore. Someone's got to settle the score. Trey and Chelsea will help you choose. Who's views win? Which ones lose? Online haters are coming for you. Maybe it's time to review the review. Hi. Hello. I love pretending like I'm Natalie at the end of the riff and I can do that. So fun. With your little wagging finger. Yes. (gasps) So good. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Review That Review, the podcast dedicated to reviewing. Reviews. We're just like Siskel and Ebert, only instead of reviewing cinematic masterpieces, we rate and review those hilarious, scathing, and sometimes suspicious online reviews. That's Chelsea Dawn. And that's Trey Gerald. And together, we're the Review Queens. We are so excited that you were all joining us today for a yet another episode. That's right. Thank you guys so much. We can't do what we do. We can't have a podcast without listeners like you. So thank you. That's true. It'd be really sad otherwise. <laughs> Very beautifully said, my queen. Oh, thank you. <gasps> oh my goodness! The time has finally come! Is today the day, Chelsea? It is! Trey and I are so thrilled to announce two very special winners today! That is right! So today we get to announce who the winner is of our rate and review raffle! Oh my god, but guess what? We entered all the names from our listeners who left us reviews, and instead of selecting just one... Y'all, we selected two, because you got two Review Queen hosts, so you got to get two Review Queen winners. (laughs) That's right. We both got our golden tickets, and we both assigned those. Let's get that drum roll, please. (laughs) The first winner is J.D. Fit. Woo! So excited for you. And the second winner is... Terry Gamble. Oh my God. Congratulations, Queens. You are our winners. You will both be receiving a gorgeous enamel pin. A stunning pin, P I N. Yes. Chanel would be proud. Chanel. And then they'll (laughs) also be receiving this ballpoint pen. Lovely. And it also is coated in some like antibacterial thing. I, I don't. Bonus. Bonus. And then we're also going to throw in a coffee mug as a surprise. Oh my God. Look at that. We have, we're full of surprises. Maybe even like a little personal note from the Queens possible. Yes. Some um, nudies, some nudie judies. I'm Trey will be sending you nudes. (laughs) I will send you some chicken noodle soup. (laughs) I didn't say it would be our nudes. Oh, good point. Good point. Okay. Wow. Okay. But in all seriousness, thank you everyone who participated. We really do appreciate everyone jumping in, helping us launch. We appreciate you all. Yes. Thank you guys so much for those amazing five-star reviews. Keep them coming. We have something else in the wings. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. So tell us, tell Yes. How's your week been, my queen? Uh, my week has been good. I'm still in, you know, full puppy mode over here. So that keeps me busy most of the time. But I just wanted to let our listeners know in case they were worried about my hydration. Yes, I Um, was. Yeah, I know. I know we were all kind of worried about that. So I have a new plan. It's just the first step. It's not like going to take me to the finish line. But if anyone ever like offers me water, I have to say yes. Oh, I love that. Right. Isn't that a good plan? So it's like, would you like some water? Yes. The answer has to be yes. I really love that. How did you find, like, come up with that idea? Somebody asked me for water and I was like, this might be the universe disguised (laughs) as this individual. And for that request, I shall say, thank you. Yes, I would love a glass of water. And wait, I literally thought you were going to be like, well, I read this book about no, like powerful this... manipulation, but you no. literally like, well, I came up with it because someone did it. Somebody asked me. <laughs> and in that very moment, I was just like here and now for as long as I can remember to do so, I am going to say yes, because they're just trying to help me out. Or maybe they're like secretly like, oh, she looks really dehydrated and I should take the hint. 
I love that. So that was the lesson of the week for me. Did you learn any lessons this week, Trey? That's a really great phrasing. I, I learned a lot of lessons this week. My sister gave birth to her second child. Aww. So cute. I saw a picture. Miles was born. And so I flew down to Charlotte, North Carolina, mm-hmm. that I could be with my family and help with actually the day that we are recording this is the day before her other child's second birthday. Oh, yeah. So I'm so glad that that worked out. Me too. They have their own birthdays. I know. That's the last thing your sister and your sister's birthdays also around this time. My mom's. Yes. Good job. Oh, your mom. We talked about oh, yeah. this in an early episode. Yes. Yeah. I remember. See, I'm listening. I appreciate that. I really learned a lot about how amazing the human body is, truly. It is. Yes. Childbirth is remarkable and amazing. And, you know, just unconditional love and joy from children really is spectacular. And I'll tell you, temper tantrums are also spectacular. Spectacular. I didn't have that many. Elliot's a wonderful child, actually. So that's nice. Anyway, so, okay. But when they do happen, you're kind of like, I get it. You're lodging a complaint. I hear you. Speaking of, you want to um, lodge a complaint. Chels, Chels. Yeah, I I always have to have my temper tantrum at the beginning of every one of our shows. And I'm going to have a temper tantrum right now. I know I I always offer up invention ideas. I hope that all of a sudden we get a plethora of inventors listening in. And maybe this is a tall order. Like maybe this is like magic eraser level realness right here. But like, can somebody make furniture stub proof? Like, is that just a thing we could do? Oh my God. I, the amount of times I stubbed my toe, like when I, when I got Goldie, my puppy, I had to move around some furniture and I've been living here for a long time. And so my body is just very used to certain furniture being in certain places that it no longer is. So the amount of times that I stub my toe on an average week is just, it's taking up so much of my time and it hurts y'all. It's painful. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I just want somebody to help me out and we can baby proof things. You know, we've made so much progress in so many areas. Can we stub proof stuff? You know that David broke his toe. Stubbing? Stubbing his toe the weekend of the lockdown of the pandemic. And he was, Ugh. it wasn't furniture though. It was like the laundry door was sort of a jar. And that's a stub. And he stubbed the toe and it broke. Oh my goodness. See, it's terrible. I mean, I think we all experience this. Nobody is doing a walk for the stub toe victims. You know what I mean? Mm. Like there's no federation for them. There's nothing. But I'm glad you're giving a voice to that. Stubbing your toe is (laughs) similar to like a paper cut. It's like so stupid and little, but so excruciating. Yeah. And even though it doesn't last, like God willing, like all that long, unless you break a toe, like you're like David, but it's just that moment of like, oh, it just hurts so bad. How would you design furniture to be unstoppable? Thought about this a lot because I thought mm, Trey might ask me for some suggestions <laughs> for the people that are listening. I don't, like it would be nice if everything could be covered in like a down pillow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like without it looking Sorry. like really heinous. My first visual is just like. <laughs> Uh, like fluff marshmallows in every corner. Yes, exactly. Like if every corner of furniture could just have a fluff marshmallow on it, I would buy, I would put it on everything. So just the thought for those inventors out there, I'm lodging a complaint against the furniture companies who have not stub proofed their furniture. Get on it. It's good. I hear you. I hear you. And that is, I, I hear you. Thank you. you. (laughs) Thank you. I feel heard. I do. All right, Trey, tell us, what are you lodging? All right, so I I feel like the air travel comes up often when yeah. we're lodging a complaint, but because I was just flying, another complaint I want to lodge is when the f- plane lands mm-hmm. and it gets to the gate and they do that ding, and then everyone like rushes Run, like, to start jumps uncl- up. They unclick, yes, yes, they're unclicking and everyone jumps up. My complaint is when people are in rows behind you but they're pushing to get wow. out before you like stand up out mm-hmm. of your seat. And it's like, you're like behind, you're behind my me. row. Yeah. No. It's the same thing with people crowding around the luggage carousel, which is a very American thing. Oh, real? Is that true? Is it like, does this not happen in other countries? Yeah. It's not like Europeans don't have that societal aggression, <laughs> I guess. Um, right. They're all eating 
eclairs. But, and then it's also the same thing about like when you're getting off of a subway and like the doors open and people like, you can't get on the subway car until I exit the car. There's an order of events here and it involves me leaving and then you entering. But I, um, the older I get, the less polite I'm becoming. Like I'm just sort of like less concerned. So these two ladies, like they were behind me and, you know, I was like get coming out and they just kept walking. And so I was like, excuse me, can I please get out? Oh, geez. And I said it before I realized I had said it. Right. It came out aggressive. And then you're like, oof, I have to match that. But go screw yourself. Like what are you doing? Like, and also it makes me mad because I walk very fast. I'm always in a rush. Like it, it's like a thing from, I think being bullied for being gay in middle school. Like I'm always, I'm head down. I'm walking really fast. Yeah. So like, I know I'm going to pass you when we get out of the airplane. Right. So like, don't try to pass me anyway. Right. Like you're not a slow mover. Like sometimes you find a slow mover every once in a while on a plane and they'll say go ahead because they know they're going to take a minute. That's a dangerous move, in my opinion, because like when does the go ahead stop? Unless you really don't care if you're the last one off the plane, then by all means. Well, okay, but that also really stresses me out. You know, like I I know that like uh, people that need special assistance, they have to wait until everyone's off the plane. Sure. But sometimes I'll notice people that don't seem like they, they seem like they're, I don't know why they're waiting. And sure. that stresses me out, like the opposite end of the spectrum. Like, I got to get off this plane, but like, I'm going to let you go before me. Yeah, I was going to say, because then are you like, oh, all of a sudden I'm at row seven and this person is here. Do I stop at row seven and let them go or do I keep going? Because you don't want to be a This hypocrite. is also like, I hate that I'm even going to say this, but I have flown first class before in my life. Sure. And that's the worst when you are like row three and like the people from the main cabin are like rushing in to like beat you off the plane. I I hate that I even said that. Um, Anyway, that's my complaint. (laughs) It's just once again, just please like everyone be considerate. Like what does it cost you to let the person stand up, pull their bag out of the thing. I often will just travel with a book bag that's under the seat in front of me. So I don't even have stuff above often. Right, so you could just get out. So it's like, what does it cost you to wait six seconds? I get it. You're like, you're like, I'm not in the hall, in the like thingy, like grabbing stuff and organizing my purse. I'm not going to take a long time, honey bunch. Right, exactly. So you better just shut up. You better stand there and you better let me get out. Okay. Because if you don't, I'm going to say, excuse me, can I please get out? And then I'm going to be like, oh, 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 oh. Turning into that mama chihuahua thing. Yeah, it's okay. Everyone has that moment. I I totally get it. I also think that the airport brings out the worst in people. Like whatever is your thing that makes you annoying, you're worse at the airport. Yeah, because it happens before like getting on the plane and they're going in zones and it's like someone is in zone eight. And it's like they haven't even started zone two yet. And they're, right. and they're standing in front of yes. you and you're like, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Can you please get out of the way? I They just called my zone. They'll call yours in a half hour. Yes. So like- that's my verbal complaint. <laughs> Thank you for hearing me out. I feel, yeah. I feel lighter. And so now Good. I want to take on some heavy hitting written complaints. How about you, Chels? I think it is time for us to take some heavy hit. So as you guys know, Trey and I are your trusty review queens. We bring you reviews from the internet. We dissect the nitty gritty. And then we rate them on a scale from one to five crowns. It's a very regal process that we call Assess That Kvetch. And guess what, listeners? You know, because we have titles, but today we are bringing you another versus episode. That's right. It's another special edition episode. Today we're going to cover a one star and a five star review on the same topic in an effort to sleuth out the real truth, because sometimes the truth lies hidden deep somewhere in the middle. That's right. For this versus episode, I selected the five star and Trey selected the one star. So to determine who reads first, we got to flip that calendar. So I called it last time. So you call it. This okay. Time. I'll call it. Okay. Okay. You ready? And go. I'm ready. Heads. It's heads. Oh my God. 
I'm so good at this game. Wow, that was the second time in a row that I guessed correctly. And here we go. We're going to do five first, which is interesting. Okay, we're going to do five first. Review that review. All righty. My review today is a five-star review from Yelp. It is written by Karina R. Sorry, I'm wrong. It is written by... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just misread. It is written by Corinne R, who is an elite reviewer. Wait, tell us, Chelsea, what is the subject of today's episode? Okay, so the subject of today's episode of Versus is clowns.com. Yep, clowns.com. <laughs> Trey, you want to tell the listeners a little bit about the service? Sure. I, yes, I do. So, yeah. so clowns.com or as Yelp calls it clowns <laughs> is a clown party equipment, rental magician entertainment company. It's located in New York. Mm -hmm. This is a company that you can hire to bring delight, joy, and fun to your parties for your children or adults. Very good synopsis. Love that. All right. So without further ado, Corinne R., uh, this is her five-star review of clowns.com. So a few weeks back, I got suckered into accompanying a friend and her little one to a children's birthday party. <laughs> Not going to lie, I was dreading it. Who wants to go to a child's birthday party when they <laughs> themselves have no children. Let me also add that I myself work with children. So chilling with them on my day off, ugh, but I digress. So as we are approaching the party, my friend says, by the way, there are going to be characters entertaining the kids. Fantastic. But really, it was awesome. Myla and Sean were so engaging and silly, so fun and so sweet with the kids. And they did an incredible job keeping the flow moving naturally from the way they greeted the children to the way they interacted with them the entire length of the party to the way they said goodbye was really great. Without hesitation, if I ever had the need to hire entertainment myself, or if I could make the recommendation to another friend, I would absolutely recommend this company. And I would tell tell to request Myla and Sean. Thanks guys for making it a fun time for all. Corinne, I have a lot of questions. Okay, let's, I, I'm ready. It's very interesting to me that Corinne was a guest. Yeah. Me and too. left a review. Yes. What do you think about that? Okay, here are my thoughts. I did think about that, but let's remember this. Corinne is an elite Yelp reviewer. Oh. So I think that Corinne is the type of person that anytime she goes anywhere, not only does she see it as an experience, but she sees it as an experience to write a review. And so for that reason, I feel like it is appropriate that Corinne, on our behalf, wrote this review. Incredibly sad. You just totally swayed me on that. Okay. So it's very interesting to me. This is, um, I'm, I'm planting a seed here. Okay. It's interesting that this reviewer has mentioned specifically the clowns that arrived by name Myla and Sean, because, yeah. you know, I would imagine that these sort of party entertainment hire companies there might be a little bit of luck of the draw. You know, if this is a major yeah. company, they have a roster of, of entertainers, entertainers, entertainers. <laughs> That's like a drag queen thing. <laughs> and uh, so I'm glad that Myla and Sean were highlighted for being so excellent. Yes. I also did write down flow. Corinne really pointed out that they were excellent at keeping the flow going. And Corinne shares that they are someone that works with children. And so, you know, I imagine Corinne has an acute awareness of what it takes to keep attention and uh, children engaged. Yeah. So I appreciated that. Yeah. I liked all the details that she gave us. What I thought was so funny about this review to me was like, it was almost like we got 
two reviews in one. Like first Corinne is like, I thought I was reading a one star review. I was like, oh, maybe they like made a mistake and they put five stars because she was really like, I got suckered into this thing. And, right. you know, I'm dreading it. And I hate clowns. Like there's going to be entertainment. Great. You know? And then she just pivoted to the, like how awesome it was. I, I appreciate that. Cause I think like, except I think I would have the opposite reaction. Like I don't need to be mm-hmm. around children, but if there were children entertainment, I would. Then you would be into it. I mean, the word fantastic that was in the review would be serious to me. Cause I would be like, all right, I want to see, I want to see what's going on here. I want to see this Elsa. I want to see how committed she is to letting it go. <laughs> like I would be yeah. into that. I love balloon animals. I love magic. Like I would totally be into that. Yeah. I want to point out oddly enough, for some reason, everywhere else in this review, Corinne has a lot of punctuation. We have ellipses. We have all capital letters. We have exclamation points. Fantastic is written on its own line without exclamation points. So truly left up to the reader, I guess. It's literally just the word fantastic. No exclamation point, no question mark, no period, no ellipses, Interesting. no written hints. But I assumed that we were still in the part of the review where she was setting up like, oh, fantastic. And because she says, but really it was awesome. You know, like yeah, it was, it felt like, I think she you read was, that what, right. I, I mean, I, it feels yeah, I right. think she was truly surprised by her own delight, delight at what she experienced. So, do we think that Corinne is being truthful here? Because it did occur to me: is this like the owner's friend? I had that thought for a second because, like I said, it felt like almost set up where it's like I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this stuff, but it was amazing. Like it, it did feel like. All of a sudden we went from like this grounded, rough, real person to a bit of an ad, a little, right? Like I would without hesitation, like if I ever need to hire entertainment. So yeah. And they, Corinne mentions Mila and Sean twice by name. Yes. However, every five-star review that I read referenced the people that were there and multiple times. I did remember that there were a few names I saw consistently like, oh, wow, everybody really loves this person. This happened to me today, randomly. I went to get a haircut Oh, and I needed to find a place to go. And at the end, I asked for her card. And it was the person's name that was referenced in the Google review. There you go. I don't think there's much humor here, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, we are talking about clowns, which are pretty silly. So I would think there might be humor. Yeah, but I think Corinne takes her job very seriously. I will say like maybe it wasn't the most ha 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 funny like Shanice that started her review with ha 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 ha, ha you know? Yeah. I mean, you, we can't all be Shanice, but I did feel like I got to know her personality. Correct. Yeah. And backstory that like, she's, I would say a middle-aged person that is of childbearing age, but doesn't have children. Right. We learned that. <laughs> we, I, love, I love when you do this. What? I love when you create a whole backstory. It's I'm, my favorite, but honestly. It's, if I was like in intelligence and I was breaking down this review, I kind of thought she was a teacher because I mean, and still, until we had the one error where she said in the end, and I just, I always read it, you know, the way that it's written. She says, I would absolutely recommend this company and I would tell, tell to request Myla and Sean. That was like one error. But other than that, like everything was sort of elementary school teacher perfect to me. When you read that, I thought the tale tell heart. That's like how I heard um, that. I didn't even think that it was T E L L T E L L, like that they put the word. Yeah, they put the word. Yeah. Like I have an opinion here, but I'm going to mention it in the crowning. I, I'll just say quickly in terms, because this is a versus episode, I do wish that there was part of this review that had talked about the process of hiring them and like what and the cost and any of those elements that might have been able to allow me to either redeem or condemn clowns.com. But bearing in mind that we're reviewing Corinne as Corinne has come to us today, I think I'm, I'm ready to crown. Yeah, I I think so too. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So Chelsea and I each have our own set of one to five crown cards. In an effort to be fair and not influenced by one another, we will simultaneously review, (laughs) reveal our ratings. Oh my God. Okay. 
The queens are tabulating. You ready? Need a minute. I need my half. <laughs> Spoiler. My... Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Total score. Oh, oh, wow. I have two and a half crowns okay. and Chelsea has three and a half. I have three and a half crowns. Okay, try explain yourself. Okay, I'm just going to say, look, my opinion yeah. is that it feels a little planted to me. Okay. I, I think either Myla and Schwann mm-hmm. said it would be really helpful if you like, if you had a great experience and you wrote a great review, mention a spy name. Mm-hmm. Or Corinne knows Myla and Sean. I, I'm not saying that is what it is. But there is something that feels a little odd to me. I do understand that, like, you're getting a personal experience. And so you would, like, tip them because they're the actual ones and whatever. But I don't know. Something feels a little little curious to me. And so I'm sticking with that. Fair. So I said two and a half crowns because the impact here is like, oh, they had a great experience. It does make me think that I'm going to need my Lynn Schwan. Yeah. I don't know why I keep saying it that way, but it's fun for me. (laughs) We're from New York. It's fine. So I gave it two and a half crowns because it it wasn't very humorous to me. And come on, this is a review about clowns. Yeah. So I wanted some fun. So, but it was to the point, good, solid five star. That's why I did that. Okay. So why did you do three and a half? Okay. First of all, like, I want to say that ham and cheese sandwich, if you're listening, Uh uh, like, I think you've really impacted, like you've made (laughs) me a little bit more soft because- Ever since you said the thing about like yelling at your phone to like our grading, I think you thought we were too harsh on something. Like I always think about you when I am reviewing. So that being said, I feel like I know Corinne. I know who she is. For me, personality plays a big part. I hate with a capital hate reading reviews that feel like just canned and the same thing over and over again, like just details in a way that doesn't give me the person's personality. And for me, that's like a huge queen factor. And I felt like I knew Corinne. And for that, like I gave her high points. It was written well. I understood her POV and I understood that she was surprised by, by her acceptance and excitement of this. I didn't really feel like it was fake. Maybe I'm too trusting, but I believed Corinne R. had this experience. And I took off a couple of crowns or one and a half crowns, I guess, because I wanted to know from the horse's mouth in terms of like the booking process. Yeah. Um, not really her fault. Also like, yeah, I wasn't cackling on the floor like I have for some of our other reviews. So for that reason, I took away the one and a half but uh three and a half crowns for me from corinne totally you know, solid tipping my crown off to you as an elite reviewer who's turning into paula now i'm gonna again say hammond you've changed me <laughs> cold hearted ham and cheese sandwich i know <laughs> all right so awesome great that's our five star of the company clowns.com we did it So we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we will hear an entirely different side of the story. I love it. BRB. BRBZ. Don't you go anywhere. Please don't go. Hold your crown. We'll be right back. Game time, everyone. All right. It's time for us to take a quick spin on the Merrill Go Round. I don't feel like an icon. Most of the days I feel like I can't. That's with an A. Okay, here's the deal. Trey and I have each picked a rotten, scathing, pithy one-star zinger. And with 30 seconds, not a second longer on the clock, we'll take turns trying to recite the zinger in as many genres as possible. Just like Queen Meryl, who can do it all, Hanny. Yep, she does no wrong before the clock runs out. Okay. All right, so I will go first since you read the five star. So Correct. today, my one star zinger is from amazon.com. Okay. It is for the br- brizzled, brizzled solar string lights outdoor. This has nothing to do 
with how I was burned by oh, these LED lights behind me. I this is a different might. company. <laughs> and these are for outdoor. Okay. So this is from Heather. The subject is they arrived tangled, received, and it's tangled. Can't even untangle it to use it. Please wrap the wire around a piece of cardboard and not itself. Disappointed. Okay. It's long. I was it's like, long. I was going to say, I don't know how pithy this pithy review is, but I, I know, but it. I just, I love that like Heather is so mad that she's like, or they are like, I am going to tell you to wrap it around cardboard. Yeah. I mean, at least she gave them some sort of instructions for how they could improve. I need like a handicap or you, you need like an extra 10 seconds or something like that, but it's fine. You did this to yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. Cause I'm going to, it's a challenge. Yes. Gonna, All right. I can't wait to hear it. Are you, Are ready? you ready? Yes. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Courtroom drama. Go! Received and it's tangled. Can't even untangle it to use. Please wrap the wire around a piece of cardboard and not itself disappointed. Melodrama. Oh, received and it's tangled. I can't even untangle it to use it. Please wrap the wire around a piece of cardboard and not itself disappointed. PLC reality. I'm received and it's tangled. Can't even untangle it to use it. Please wrap the wire around a piece of cardboard and not self disappointed. <laughs> That's all. Wow, I only got three. I really <laughs> handicapped myself. You, I that's can't what do this. I'm ever saying. Again. I don't know what you're thinking. This is a game. Try. I just, I guess I'm living in the past because of how I was burned by Brookstone's LED lights. But it's true. Anyway, that was hilarious. That TLC read alone <laughs> should get you cast in something because I mean, that's the kind of stuff that my sister and oh her my husband. Oh my god, watched. that's they just... so funny. Like what like what was your inspo for that? Like Duck Dynasty or something? Like like what was no, that? No, because they don't they don't like gay people, oh, so I don't okay, support sorry. Duck Dynasty. <laughs> sorry. There's the show called Extremely freaking cheap or oh. something or like very freaking cheap and it's just like people that are like doing the most outrage. it's all fake I'm sure but it's a reality show where they're like literally doing everything possible to spend no money oh and okay. so they kind of sound like that they sound like they're trying to save the money okay anyway <laughs> is that how people sound when they're trying to save money okay all of them wow Anyway, okay, now it's your a, turn. There, it is my, I'm stalling, as you can see. <laughs> I think I'm gonna win with three. You might. So, my review is from Costco.com. Mm. Um, it is a one star review of Nature's Garden Keto Snack Mix, the 24 ounce variety, a two pack. Um, it is written by Mary Brown, and the subject is nasty stuff, threw it away. And the review, <laughs> <laughs> the zinger, is ick made my stomach upset <laughs> okay that's a really good one thank you all right you ready uh, yes three two televangelist one, go. Ick made my stomach upset <gasps> magic show appropriate ick made my stomach upset disney made my stomach upset soap opera ick Made my stomach upset. Adult film. Ick. Made my stomach upset. Musical theater. Ick. Made my stomach upset. Opera diva. Ick. My stomach upset. One. <laughs> That's all. Three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Wow. That's seven continues to be the highest. That's, that's ever a happened. really high score in my opinion. Wow. But my, I mean, like you had not a chance, Trey. Like I, know, I, but... I feel like I can't even accept the win. You accept this win. All right, I'll accept the win. Thank you. You never want to accept the win. It's hard to accept the win. Yeah. I think that's a metaphor for something, but we'll just honk and take it. Honk, honk. Yeah. I like that. Review that review. Okay, we are back from that rousing game break with Meryl, and it is Trey's turn. Okay. Are you excited, Trey? I'm excited. All right. Okay, so okay. I am covering the one-star review for clowns.com, and I, like you, had a, a challenging time picking the one that I thought would be the most appropriate for the episode, but yeah, I have landed with this one-star review from Yelp 
for clowns.com written by Tina R. Tina R. And here's the review. Okay. Iron Man came a half hour late past the 3.30 to 4 p.m. window. Arrived at 4.30. He was not dressed or ready to entertain. In fact, he got dressed on my front stoop. <laughs> where the children saw him getting dressed. (laughs) He was not in character whatsoever and didn't speak or make a peep. This was supposed to be a character experience and interaction. Instead of coming in character and bringing the Iron Man persona, he awkwardly lingered around my backyard making the entire party feel extremely uncomfortable. His suit was a red leotard. At least put some shoulder pads in and bring some excitement. My husband and I were completely embarrassed, and he was the joke of the party. (sighs) Dot, 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 the Caps joke. Never again will I use this company, nor will my guests. Horrendous Iron Man, absolutely the biggest letdown for my son and his fourth birthday. I even called when I scheduled and told them exactly what our expectations were. And Christian, whom we booked with and spoke with multiple times, just simply yesed me to death to get our money. Oh, yes, this is a character experience and interaction. Couldn't be the farthest thing from that. They sent the complete opposite of Iron Man. Every kid saw through him. My husband called to discuss what had happened with the manager, and he had zero compassion and didn't even offer merely a credit or slight refund. We could have picked up a better Iron Man hanging around Times Square. In fact, those are probably better. A complete embarrassment. I'm mortified. Wow. I got to say, I always laugh at these four-year-old birthday parties (laughs) where the parents take it so so seriously. I feel like Tina really just summed it up for us in that last sentence when she said she was embarrassed. Cause I feel like going into this, Tina was like, everybody went to Betsy's son's four-year-old birthday and they couldn't stop talking about that Iron Man cake. And I'm going to do them one better. Like I'm not going to have just an Iron Man cake, which I will have. I'm going to have Iron Iron Man. Man. And then when when it just didn't pan out the way that it it had panned out in her brain, she was just that much more hurt. Oh yeah. Anyway, Tina, first of all, I, when you were talking about Iron Man getting dressed on the front stoop, I, I wrote traumatizing because oh, I'm picturing yeah. in my head the children watching. And then I'm glad that she brought that up because I was thinking like, that is like a number one no-no, especially when you're going to these kids' birthdays. It's like, if you're showing up as the Easter bunny, you're the Easter bunny from the second you get there. You don't put on your Easter bunny suit on the front stoop. Like how traumatic, can you imagine? Tina's like, Brayden, Brayden, like, Iron Man is here. Like Braden comes running to the window with all of his friends to see Iron Man on his front stoop. And he sees like this like guy's butt changing into a leotard. Like, right. How traumatic. Not that I think that this is Tina's responsibility, but why yeah. wasn't the person offered the bathroom to change him? Well, I just feel like, again, like prior point, like you got it. That's even, that's weird kind of too. What does Iron Man have a mask? Yeah. Like you can't drive in the mask. I don't know if it was a decent costume, I would think it would have a separate headpiece. So like you could wear the rest of the outfit and then toss the headpiece on, right? Wait, but it's so funny to me that they are even pointing out like that this performer must have been kind of scrawny because they say awkwardly lingering and that he could have at least put shoulder pads in. I know. I felt like Tina really wanted to bring this Iron Man up to her walk-in closet (laughs) and be like, hold on one second and just like grab all the like shoulder pads and like boob inserts from all of her bathing suits and just pat them up. What do you think the audition process is to like become one of these employees? Yeah. So here's what I'm curious about. When was this review written? 2019. Okay. So this was written like 
All right. Around the same time as our other reviewer. I, yeah, I was just thinking like, did clowns.com get like too big for their britches? Like we're just grabbing anybody we can grab at this point and throwing them at the party. Like it definitely seems like there's some quality control issues. And interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure that all of their five-star reviews that I did read didn't reference like an Iron Man situation. I feel like everybody that had a really good experience had pretty much just the like traditional clowns and the magic show and the bunny. I really want to honor just this one star that I've chosen, but I had a hard time picking. And you mentioned that a lot of the five stars mentioned the performers by name. Mm -hmm. And what I happened to notice is that the huge, vast majority of these one stars mentioned the owner by name. Oh, Um, that's interesting. Well, that kind of makes sense. A lot of the storytelling that's happening when you look at these one-star reviews is yeah. from the um, management side of things. Right. And this review doesn't totally go into that other than the fact that like nothing was offered when they were disappointed. Right. But I like this review because I was once hired in college to mm-hmm. attend a themed Polar Express party. Okay. When that movie came out with Tom Hanks. Yes. And I had to dress up as a train conductor and I had to like punch oh. everyone's ticket when they arrived. Oh, that's cute. I can see you doing that. No one had their tickets. And so like five <laughs> minutes in, I was just like, I'm not doing this. But the woman that threw the party like kept walking by and she kept, she like hated me. And I like really did not do the job. So I just like was reminded of that experience about how this person is like, I've, I don't know what an Iron Man right. does. So I'm just going to like stand over here. Yeah, she like, said that yeah. they didn't speak. Like, were they just silent the whole time? Not even a peep. Not even a peep. So Iron Man came in. He's partially dressed or maybe not dressed <laughs> at all. Based on the fact that she's saying he's only wearing a red leotard, I think he was putting the full leotard on on the stoop. So not dressed. But this is really a problem because if you can select an Iron Man character, then like the person coming needs to know what to do. Like that is insane. Totally. To Tina, Tina R's point. Yeah. That is a problem. You've signed a contract and the person didn't even make a peep. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to have a problem here. Yeah, I agree. I think that Tina R is fully justified in her review and experience here, but I do just feel like There's like that vibe of wanting to please everybody else because a lot of what she talks about beyond just the experience of being disappointed by the quality of the performer is just like they became the joke of the party. They were embarrassed. Maybe we could have made lemonade out of lemons. But in this situation, I just feel like maybe she like talked it up she was like Peggy you're gonna be shocked with this big thing that I had like she like told all the friends or like maybe on the the like invitation it was like meet Iron Man or like something that was like very central wait I just looked up on the website yeah you can't even get a quote you have to call to get a quote yeah but this image of an of what Iron Man is yeah is so terrifying it is not what I thought like in a good way or in a bad way like in a terrifying hilarious way oh (laughs) here I'm gonna yeah please send it to me I'd love to see it patreon you can this is like not what I thought the Iron Man would look like but this one has shoulder pads so okay I mean my nephew really loves Iron Man and I've seen Iron Man quite a bit so I feel like isn't this that what's that guy Robert Downey Jr is he Iron Man yeah I'll be able to give a fair assessment I think so this does not look like that oh okay I get it It's Iron Man-esque. So this is like, (laughs) oh, wow. I mean, that doesn't exactly look like a leotard to me. But I understand the leotard comment. So basically what it does, maybe the guy forgot his shoulder pads or maybe he just like didn't have time because he was dressing on the stoop. But like- But if this thing is lingering around- That's so gross. It is going to become the talking point, especially with all parents. But under the right right attitude, I feel like it could be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I kind of want this now. And to your point, if I saw this online, I don't think I would be expecting anything fabulous to show up at my door. Like, this is pretty janky. This is what it looks like to me. If somebody was wearing football pads and, and like knee pads- underneath a red leotard that's what you have here I mean it doesn't even look like it's I agree 
No, I agree with Tina's last few sentences. Like, that's not the Iron Man costume you're going to see in Times Square. This is actually much worse than the Iron Man costume that my nephew wore for Halloween that we got at Party City. But when did all those movies come out? Maybe we're thinking of that Robert Downey Jr. movie version. And this was maybe the before that. Who knows? Who knows? Either way. Okay, it sucks. I wonder if they added that to the website after this review. It's just to be like... And if you want Iron Man, this is what you're going to get. We also didn't talk about how he came half an hour late. I mean, this is this is a pretty unacceptable experience. A lot of the negative one star reviews will say the performers were really great, but dealing with management was so horrible. Oh, interesting. But this is this sort of was an anomaly. It does leave the impact for me that I need to like do a little like more Mm -hmm. digging because maybe I should do like a princess rather than like a guy superhero character like it seems like maybe you can't guarantee what you're gonna get like this is horrible I mean if you hired an Iron Man and he was lurking around yeah and didn't even come dressed that being said like what is the case for one scenario is likely the case for another I mean yes like I said the five-star reviews that I referenced had much more like fairies and things like that so I think if you ordered something a lot more generic from cons.com you could probably expect a decent turnout because even I have some friends that that's their job like they dress up as birthday fairies or whatever and a lot of those people they put their own costumes together, you know, like they, they, they want to look like a good fairy. So they're, I mean, it did, it did occur to me, like, does Tina not have like a 20 year old cousin or nephew or someone who like just get the costume on Amazon, but that's like undermining this entire company. But that's a whole, I'm telling you, Tina, like she thought she was rolling out the red carpet. She had to be, and she Betsy. told the kids. Yeah. She had to be Betsy and all the kids were going to get an autograph from the real Iron Man <laughs> and the dad needed to be there to take the photo. And we wanted this to be really good. And, and I think that Tina is justified. I do too. Was I laughing? I wasn't really laughing. How was the spelling and grammar? Was that it's all, good? all good? They almost every time there's an exclamation mark, it's multiple times. And then do you feel like if you were looking up this service to, you know, hire someone for your nephew and you read, you came across Tina's review. Do you think it would impact, yes. you know, your willingness to, yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do. Let's crown this. Yeah. Let's crown him. The Queens are tabulating. You ready? I'm second guessing myself. Okay. I guess I'm ready. Total score. We did it. We're unanimous. Four crowns, four crowns. I gave Tina four crowns because, like I said, it was impactful. Uh, It seemed honest. Seemed like pretty much an unacceptable scenario. Didn't really seem like they did anything when she called up to rectify the situation. I think this is good information that I'd want to know if I were, you know, looking to hire this company. So for that reason, four crowns. How about you try? Everything you said, the only reason I didn't go with five, because I, I did find it to be very entertaining, yeah. is that it does feel like, I don't know if this is entirely representative of every experience you'll receive. Right. So I gave it four because I feel like this is very valuable information and it is having a lasting impact on me. But Mm -hmm. I also think that like, you know, maybe if you get a different performer, if you get Mila and Sean, they're really going to go above and beyond. So four crowns. Yeah. If I was going on Yelp and I specifically wanted Iron Man and I searched Iron Man in the reviews and I found this deal breaker. But I think for me, it's like, if I wanted Minnie Mouse, I might search that and have a different experience. So I don't think it's a deal breaker in terms of the company at large, but I do think it's a deal breaker for the Iron Man. (gasps) There's a reply. There's a reply. (sighs) Okay, so I have been sitting over here biting my tongue this entire episode recording because, Chelsea, I, you are not ready for this. Okay, I'm scared. I, okay, I, I am scared for when this episode goes live because I think that this owner is going to go after us. Oh, no. And try to decimate us to the core. (gasps) Stop it. Well, okay, owner, if you're listening, like this is a comedy podcast. So don't come after us. We're just having fun. So I could play this little, there's a reply sound effect 20 times because (gasps) dear God, there are so many replies 
from the business owner. Oh my his God. Name is Wait, Sean. there's multiple replies. The business owner yeah. has replied so many times. <gasps> this business owner is ruthless. <gasps> All of a sudden it's a soap opera. There's a whole twist. She's really her mother and also the twin <laughs> and has died and come back to life. All right. Yes. So whenever there is a reply, it's awesome because it gives us yeah. the opportunity because replies can be very telling. Oftentimes yeah. these businesses can't defend themselves. You know, we're only harping on like the comical, funny stuff. True. Okay. So this specifically may not be the case because okay. there are so many replies, Chelsea, that I have picked five and I have come up with correlating topics. So I'm going to read five topics and then I want you just to pick one of the five. And that's the one that I will include on today's episode. And then anyone else who's curious can go on to Yelp and just go into the dark, dark void oh my God. of the okay. business owner replies. Wait, and I just need to clarify really quickly before I pick. This is all a reply to Tina R? No, Tina R actually doesn't even have a reply. Okay. But I had to include this because this business owner is so communicative on Yelp. Wow. All right. All right. So I want you to pick a reply topic. Okay, I'm ready. Your choices are bunnies. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Humiliation. Okay. Prayer. <laughs> Homeless. Okay. Makeup. There are so many choices. Okay. Let's go with humiliation. All right. This is a reply to a review from someone named Steph A. Okay. And the first sentence of their one-star review is, I had an unfortunate experience with them. They left me feeling discouraged and humiliated. Oh my God. They mentioned they wanted to do something special for their friend's son's birthday. Okay. So this is the reply from the business owner. OMG, you felt humiliated, pressured, and belittled on a phone call for a kid's party? Oh, no. If you need some moral support, call and ask for My recommendation, instead of writing all these Yelp reviews all over the country from California to Manhattan, go out and do something more positive with your time and energy, like volunteer. It might get rid of your psychosis. Oh, and I am looking for a 75 Mustang. Find me one, you know, for a friend. This is terrible. What a terrible reply. I just wanted to include this last sentence from another okay. reply. It ends with, this is fully quote, copy paste. So sad, exclamation mark. We pray you change your ways and how you conduct your life. Wow. That is a reply from a business owner. That's unacceptable. I'm going to read you another one. Right, I'm going to read you another one because oh now I, I feel like, okay. Okay. So this is um, a different reply. Asterisk, 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 all caps. Crazy alert, asterisk, <gasps> asterisk, asterisk. It's, it's a, so the person that wrote the review has 330 Yelp reviews. So okay. it says, instead of wasting your time writing 330 Yelp reviews and extorting small businesses, I recommend you volunteer at a children's hospital or a homeless shelter. Uh, okay. Okay. This is not a way to do business. When you're the business owner, it's your job to pacify the situation. And I think as we've heard on this podcast, that can be done with a little bit of like, fun attitude. For example, the reply that we had, like, you know, DJ yeah. Spinfo was obviously a little bit like butthurt. He let us know some new details. But then he ended with contact me. Yeah. You know, like yeah. we got he, that he was a human. He, he wanted to tell his side of the story and that's what this is for. And I'm all for hearing the business owner's side of the story. Like that's okay. But this is just like mean. Like what's with the unsolicited advice, buddy? Like maybe you should be volunteering instead of, you know, having these snarky responses to every person that's reviewed you online. There is a reply that then had an updated review that was literally like, I don't understand how the, this business owner wrote a reply that blamed us as the customers for everything wrong with his company. Right. Which like, like really was sort of like, like left an impression on me. Yeah. I think that's a great way of summing it up because unfortunately, especially in these sort of fringe companies, we don't need to have these entertainers at our party, right? Like this is something that we're adding. This is a customer service industry and if people are not enjoying the entertainment that you're providing, you have to hear that feedback. 
especially if it's happening consistently, like it's not like we have one rogue with Spinfo. It was like right. we had one sort of rogue one star review amongst an entire sea Great of five star point. reviews. Great point. Like th this is not the only person that's had a negative experience. And if as a business owner, you're not willing to see what it is you might have done wrong and pivot and say, I hear you. We'll make this right. There are replies on like three and four star reviews okay. where it is like professionally written and it's okay. like, we strive for excellence and, uh, you know, we're disappointed that you were disappointed. There are sprinklings of those, hmm. but these more recent ones really like took a turn. And that is a tough position. I wonder if this is somebody else, like somebody else has taken over the business or somebody's son who's in high school is like really having fun getting on the internet and saying, I don't know. Like, it just well, this, this business owner has a profile. So it is their image and name on every reply, but maybe like maybe their nephew or maybe somebody else started like writing for them or, or something like replying like on behalf of the business for them, if there really is such a big change in tone, or is it just that we reserve this tone for one star reviews? This whole world of reviews is a very tricky thing. And it's tough when someone can put something in print that is painful to hear and you cannot erase. Yeah. So I understand the desire to for sure. attack back, but the impression I think is what we want to highlight here is right. what is the impact of, of reading that as a possible customer is really tough to swallow. I agree. Like I completely understand the desire to be like, but in these examples, it's like, these are real people who had real experiences. This is a review website called Yelp that is made for people to voice their personal experience. Point. And that's why they're here. It just really does not make this business owner look good. It, it shines them in a really bad sort of insecure chihuahua nibbly light. It's tough. It's a tough position. And I hope that the business owner um, doesn't kill me in my sleep. This makes me really appreciate the business owners that took the high road. I hope they can turn things around. I always want to leave the possibility that this can change. That was a lot. I feel like I need to like get some good energy flowing back into the room. It's going to be okay. And I want to send healing, positive energy to the company, yeah, me too. to the business owner. That's the amazing thing is that we can start over can. every single day. Every day. So that was our verses one and five, <sighs> plus some replies from the seller of clowns.com. That was... All right, my queen. Yes. So that brings us to the most regal portion of our show. Who are you inducting for? My royal highness. I'm so glad you asked, Trey. This week, I am inducting Shappy Pretzel Co. Now, if you live in LA and maybe you're from the Philadelphia area, I like if you are, we should hang out, but you know that we long for Philadelphia pretzels over here. Like there's, there's just nothing like a Philadelphia pretzel. It's hard to explain to people that don't understand it, but Shappy, Shappy gets it. And so over quarantine, Shappy started making just for himself, Philadelphia pretzels in his kitchen and giving them out to friends and they became super popular. And then Shappy started, you know, having a little bit of a pop-up out of his house, like out of his own personal oven. And then he started, you know, kind of expanding beyond that to the point where people like me were able to place an order and order some Shappy pretzels that I got to tell you, as someone from Philly, these pretzels are so freaking good. Like they're hard on the outside, soft on the inside. They just hit every Philadelphia soft pretzel note perfectly. My dog who passed away, her cardiologist is from Philadelphia and she loves Philadelphia pretzels. They always bring them to her. Aww. And I brought her some of Shappy's pretzels because I was like, she's got to experience this thing. And she wrote me and she was like, oh my God, these were so good. Thank you for bringing them back from Philly for me. And I was like, girlfriend, I didn't go to Philly. I went to the Valley. I picked these up at a pop-up in the Valley. You can get it whenever you want. They also have Oreo stuffed Philadelphia pretzels. I was just going like... to say, I went to the website and they <gasps> oh, have this you? Oreo Ugh. stuffed pretzel. It's out of this world. Shappy, thank you for everything that you do for all of us Philadelphia people who are a little bit homesick and would just like a Philly pretzel here in LA. Follow them at Shappy Pretzel. 
and do it. If you live in LA, place that order. Okay. Just, just stop what you're doing right now and place the order. So I won't thank one. you at Chappie Pretzel. You are my Royal Highness. I love that. Love carbs. It looked so good. <laughs> well, who are you inducting? All right. Today, my inductee for my Royal Highness has got to be the aloe vera plant. Okay. Now, I have Scottish blood and um, mm. I'm an exceedingly pale. People <laughs> in middle school used to call me powder because <gasps> that movie came out when oh I was in God. middle school. Oh my God, that's right. But I think that that person killed people. I, I don't know. I never saw it. Oh, it was too I triggering. never saw it. But um, I am just incredibly pale. Don't really tan. Like I just sort of burn and peel. <laughs> and so I have been someone who has utilized the benefits of the aloe vera plant so many times in my life. And so I did a little research. This is like my new favorite thing, apparently. The, the benefits of the aloe vera plant first appeared in Chinese and Sumerian writings around 3000 BC. Oh, wow. And in the That's time, crazy. I know, in the time of the pharaohs, the Egyptians called aloe vera the plant of immortality. <gasps> wow. So I was trying to find like who discovered it, but it seems like they always knew. And have you ever seen an actual aloe vera plant that you break in half and squeeze? Yes. It out? Yeah. It's yeah, like my grandparents had one. Yes. On lawn. Yeah. It's so insane. And it's just, I just want to induct aloe vera, the plant for yes, my really not Highness. the drag queen, because there's got to be one. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> there's got to be, be a drag queen wait, in aloe vera. <laughs> wait, that could be a drag king, Al Overa. Al Overa. Yeah. That's good. Oh, I like it. We can induct Al Overa as well. We can, um, yes. But if you're I'm listening. But I am inducting aloe vera plant because it really, really, really has saved my skin many times. And I don't think that people acknowledge it enough. So today, aloe vera plant. You are my Royal Highness. Wow. All right. You and the Pharaohs, you know. Pharaoh story. <laughs> yes. All right, Queen. We did it. Another round on the Ferris wheel of review that review. Fun. That's better than the ear holes. I appreciate that. Okay. Mm. Thank you for joining us today. If you like what you heard, please tell a friend. If you didn't like what you heard, please tell an enemy. If you want to lodge your own complaint, submit your own review or share with the world who you would induct for my Royal Highness, leave us a voicemail, Queens at 1-850-REVIEW-0. You can also follow us on all the socials at The Review Queens. I'm at Chelsea BD until I get rich enough to buy back my name. And I'm at Trey Gerald with two R's. Listeners, you can become a member of our royal court when you join our Patreon at patreon.com slash review that review. You can also watch live clips from our recording sessions on YouTube. And remember, ignore the haters. You're a queen. Gender non-specific queen. Of course. Bye. Bye. Don't be a clown. Don't clown around. Quit clowning around. Don't clown me. I'm going to smush a pie in your face. I'm going to crown that clown, y'all. Bozo. <laughs> review That Review is an independent podcast. Certain names have been redacted or changed to protect the guilty. Executive produced by Trey Gerald and Chelsea Don with editing and sound design by Trey Gerald. With voiceover talents by Ida Kaminsky, our cover art was designed by Logo Vora, and our theme song was written by Joe Kanozian and sung by Natalie Weiss. What do you think? Oh my God, you're so sweaty. Longest episode ever. <laughs>